A blockbuster story over the weekend about the future of college athletics by our next guest. And he is Pat Forty, uh, writing uh, in Sports Illustrated, an interview with Jack Swarbrick, one of the most influential people in the industry, saying that the NCAA D1 breakup is inevitable. Let's talk about it with Pat. Pat, thank you very much. And I know a lot of people have wondered about the future. Finally, someone who matters, and nobody matters more on that level than, than Jack Swarbrick, uh, told you this. G uh, go into our, your conversation with him. Yeah, Paul, a good wide-ranging uh, interview. And as you noted, I mean, he's, he's smart, he's, he's influential, he's involved. I mean, he's the only AD on the College Football Playoff Management Committee. Uh, and so I think he has a pretty good read on the landscape. And, you know, he said, yeah, he thinks the breakup of FBS Division One is inevitable, that there's irreconcilable differences between the schools and the way they want to approach uh, the future, uh, that – name, image, and likeness, realignment, and the playoff are kind of driving people further apart as opposed to bringing them together. And he thinks it's an untenable landscape the way it is now. The question is when, and he put the timetable pretty far down the road, mid-2030s, since that's when the ACC and SEC contracts are scheduled to expire. He thinks that this will be largely driven by, you know, television contracts and and when those free up teams to move and things to happen. But you know, there's other people who think that, that the, the landscape is so unstable that things could happen even before then. Yeah, and, and listen, Pat, I'm, I'm not in a position to disagree with, with Swarbrick. I'm glad he's at least putting this out, being honest, as opposed to some of his brethren. But he does seem rather charitable. It's, it's hard to imagine this model holding on. So uh, tell us more about what, what he told you in terms of how – how the sport is, is evolving right now and, and what can be done or what will be done? Well, <laughs> it's, there are so many issues that nobody can figure out. These are all smart people, obviously, involved. You talk to them, I talk to them, that are leading athletic programs and conferences, uh, and they still can't figure out their way around these things. And so, you know, I think that it's a question of uh, – who's in charge, which starts with the NCAA and its continued failure to lead. Uh, and then beyond that, what do the conferences want and how different are their wants and desires? And so do they have separate rules for each league? Uh, who polices those rules? Do they then still want to play against each other? Is there still enough commonality for a traditional football playoff and even more pertinently perhaps – uh, the NCAA basketball tournament, uh, and just you go on down the list, and I don't think anybody has good answers. We, we've yet to find anybody that says, well, if we follow this path, it'll get us to something that makes most of the people come together most of the time. I, I just we, we don't seem to have a, a mechanism for that. I mean, it's obviously has gotten bad enough that the NCAA has asked Congress, perhaps the worst bureaucracy, the only bureaucracy worse than the NCAA, for help, and Congress hadn't shown that much uh, interested in being able to solve the NCAA's problems for them. No, why would they care? Um, I'm curious about this, Pat, because the easiest thing for any of us to say is the current model is, is broken, it's unsustainable. Dabo Sweeney, Nick Saban can all talk about NIL and the transfer portal. But knowing how the, the these people work, and you talk to somebody who's at the vanguard of influence what can they do in the, in the short term other than form a committee, go to a Ritz Carlton uh, on a on a beach and have another meeting? <laughs> well, that's that's the modus operandi, <laughs> uh, and it hasn't been terribly productive. So, you know, what can they do in the meantime? I, I mean, great question. I, I I think you have to almost just look at it in bite-sized terms instead of trying to eat an entire elephant at once. So, okay, transfer portal, what can we do there? The NCAA Transformation Committee that's headed by Greg Sankey of the SEC and Julie Cromer, the AD at Ohio University. You know, do we have transfer windows that make this less of a year-round constant thing and you can manage rosters a little more carefully and players can have a better idea where they can and can't go? Uh, so that maybe is one small short-term solution there. NIL. Uh, you know, can you possibly put the horse back in the barn 
and stop this from being, you know, straight, flat-out recruiting inducements versus being paid for actually having a marketable name, image, and likeness already on a college campus. I don't know. That one's even tougher, I think, to me. Uh, you go on down the line. I just I don't know where these answers come from, but I think you have to almost take it piecemeal and say, let's see what we can do with each of them and then put it together and say, who wants to be in this boat and who wants to be in a different boat? Talking to Pat Forty of Sports Illustrated. Pat, let me ask you a broader question about the, the NIL slash transfer portal issues. And, you know, we have now seen the biggest names of the industry talk about it, including your story with Swarbrook. Um, I'm, I'm just asking kind of a broad question because a lot, you know, a lot of people have pushed back saying, hey, we're not doing anything wrong. We're, we're, we're just managing uh, as best we can on NIL. How bad is it out there right now from what you, you know, what the stories that you hear uh, and, and the mood at the moment? Well, I, you know, I think we, we might have hit peak NIL wildness. Uh, I think it might even have been the day that I talked to Swarbrick or the day after when uh, Nigel Pack, the guard from Kansas State basketball, uh, went to transfer to Miami in an announcement that was put out by an agency uh, complete with terms saying 800000 for two years. This is a guy who averaged 17 points a game on a team that wasn't very good, didn't make the NCAA tournament. And if the market for him, for a school that doesn't really care that much about basketball, is 400 grand a year, then the market's gone, gone wild. And maybe. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN.